guitars play because their styles were very different. His playing style was unorthodox, self-taught guitarist. Playing live, it sounds cool, everything's good, but when you put it side by side, perhaps on a record, you know, it doesn't sound quite as tight. He still got his message across, what he was playing. You could, I could understand where he was coming from with it. His execution just wasn't the best. Bruce A. would do his leads, and then if there was problems with tightness between rhythm guitar, I would just play it. James Hetfield would play all the rhythms for Mattel because he's the stronger rhythm player, and just whoever was the stronger rhythm player out of like two guitar players in a band, apparently that's what they did. That was probably a real difficult thing. You know, that we probably redid some of Bob's tracks. It wasn't like a, against him, uh, obviously, as a person or anything. It just, you know, just was going to better, we felt was going to better, you know, that album to have Jack play all the rhythms. If you have enough time and money, you can sit with somebody and redo stuff and, you know, but, but unfortunately, time and money, we don't have a lot of. You're still in the band, man, you know, you're still playing live. Things were kind of moving in a weird direction at that point, but we put together a killer record. It was an excellent session. If you're willing to, say, take criticism and say, make these better, or when you leave, you say, you know what, I really realize now that I need to practice on this. It's about bettering yourself in your craft, right? I mean, you can only do what you want to do, and each album is a snapshot in time. The Hammer Smash Face EP was a pretty good continuance of that. We ended up deciding to do some cover songs, you know, and thought that it'd be cool to go back to meet up with Dennis Fira. And we recorded the two songs for the Hammer Smash EP here, uh, The Exorcist and Zero the Hero. Jack was going to do the first half of the of the Zero the Hero solo, and, and Bob was going to do the second. Half. The way certain recording sessions had gone over the past couple of years, we figured he might have, you know, kind of known that he was really going to have to, you know, step it up or things were not going to work out, and he did not manage to step it up. And I remember you going, I think it was, oh, you guys got a half hour or something, you know, what do we do? Well, we have to change it on and get Jack to finish the solos. So then we had a decision to make. We all thought to each other, well, you know, we have to tell Bob that we changed his solo, you know, because, you know, we can't just think he did a solo and then change it. And we felt that's not right, you know. So I remember, I think it was Barnes called him that night even maybe saying, hey, dude, we had to, you know, change your solo. We were also pretty young at that time and we probably weren't very good at deal you know we didn't really know how to handle the situation we're like well what do we do you know bob's having a hard time keeping up we were really kind of leaning more towards like alex and jack's writing at that point than say bob's writing you know because he did write a lot in the beginning you know a lot of songs but russe did write you know in the first couple of albums you know and even on tomb of the mutilated too i don't think a lot of our songs wouldn't have been we wouldn't have written them if it wasn't for bob because he had a real offbeat way of writing and a very unique writing style. Rousset was monumental. He's the guy that came up with the Skull Full of Maggots riffs, arguably our most popular song, you know, uh, of all time. I credit him with a lot of that, a lot of the greatest songs we ever wrote. It was a different style of writing, so that was, was good, of course. It took Alex and Jack to really make it concrete and decipher it. He had some really abrasive sounding riffs like nobody I've ever heard before. It's unique because it's part of their identity, it's part of their sound. He was, I think, recognized more for his presence on stage than anything else. Bob was a very powerful stage presence. I mean, he's definitely a little bit bigger than the rest of us, and he was just up there. Like, oh. It was kind of wild looking to me. It looked like he was just going out of control, like he was trying to jump out of his body or something. He definitely stayed the hell out of his way on stage. He was putting everything into it. I mean, he really was a brutal performer. He was fully into doing the best he could and everything. It was not for lack of effort, so it was a very difficult decision for us to let Bob go. We felt bad at the same time because here's the first time we're making a major change in the band, a band that we all started, all five of us, and he's an original guy, and I, you know, I went to school with him in Barnes, and we've known the guy, and here we have to kick him out of the band. We picked the worst time to tell Bob he was out of the band, and we had Alex do it. It's not easy to talk about. You don't even want to say it to someone, you know, especially when you're friends with them. We called him up, and the Buffalo Bills just won the championship, and they're going to the Super Bowl. Everyone's happy in Buffalo. I mean, you're, everyone's elated. 
Oh, uh, by the way, Bob, you're out of the band. It was not fun to have to give him the bad news. It was rough, you know, but it was something that we felt definitely had to be done. It really upset Bob, you know, he took it really bad. You know, it's not easy to talk about now. It's something I'd rather not even think about, really. I should have talked to Bob after that, but I think he was so hurt and so angry and hated us so deeply. He pretty much gave up playing guitar and didn't want to have anything to do with the music scene or any of us or bands or, or anything like that. And we have not heard from him since then. Sorry that he dropped off the planet, so to speak, because he was a really good person, too, at heart. You know, because it would be cool to see him, you know? I mean, we haven't seen him a long time, and he was a part of the band, obviously, and he was there since the beginning. I kind of wish that, like, somebody knew where Russe was just to get his yeah, little piece in I on said it, that, too, man. He never has made any effort to get in touch with us or anything. It's just unfortunate that his abilities weren't progressing along with the rest of the guys. Otherwise, he probably would still be in the band. Sucks, because he's a great guy, but gotta move on at that point we're three albums in and we gotta move on bob was out and then we're like okay well who are we gonna get